Hi and welcome to this quick review of acid base theory at A2 level. Uh, you'll need to have your completed independent study materials and notes um, handy because the clip is designed to go with them. So during the clip I'll leave some of the relevant definitions of for key words and key phrases um, in blue for you to refer to. So looking very briefly at some of the more recent history of acid base theory in 1884, Swedish chemist Svante Arrhenius proposed that in aqueous solution, acids form H plus ions and bases form OH minus ions, which we call H plus as protons and OH minus as hydroxide. A little bit later, in 1909, a Danish chemist called Soren Sorensen um, was the first person to formally propose the idea of a mathematical model uh, to try and measure acidity. Uh, this was called the pH scale, pH standing for power of hydrogen. A bit further down the line in 1923, the first idea of acids and bases reacting with each other was put forward by Johannes Bronsted, a Danish chemist, and Thomas Lowry uh, from England. Uh, we now call this the conjugate acid-base pairs theory. So the Arrhenius model was based around three basic ideas. Acids dissociate in aqueous solution to release protons, alkalis dissociate in water to release hydroxide ions, and protons and hydroxide ions neutralise each other to form water. And in this context, a proton is a hydrogen ion, or H+, obviously. So if we imagine a hydrogen atom, and then remove the single electron, from its outer shell. We're left with a proton, so that's why we say a proton is the same as a hydrogen ion. So the bronsted lowry model moves the Arrhenius model on a little bit by defining an acid as a proton donor and a base as a proton acceptor, and introduces the idea of conjugate base systems. So let's now have a look at how a conjugate acid base pair might work. So we already know what an acid and a base actually do in terms of protons. What happens afterwards? So let's look at an example. Um, HNO2 is an acid and it loses a proton to form um, NO2-. So NO2- is then regarded as its conjugate base because that ion could accept a proton back in the reverse direction to become HNO2 again. So because they can interconvert via the exchange of a proton, this makes HNO2 and NO2- minus a conjugate acid-base pair. So let's have a look at some possible examples. So if we consider the reaction between um, hydrochloric acid and water, um, using dark cross diagrams, we form something called a hydronium ion. Now we'll talk about the hydronium ion in a minute. But if we look at the acid and the base, we can see that water behaves as a base. And using colour coding, you can easily see the pairings. So instead of calling them acids and conjugate bases, what we do is we write in each pair. There's pair 1 and pair 2, which can be interconnected. So here's an exercise for you. Uh, pause the clip and give this a go. See if you can take each of these equations and in words use the conjugate acid base pairs idea to explain what happens to each species. So in the first one, sulfuric acid is lost to protons by much conjugate base, the hydrogen sulfate ion HSO4 minus, and OH minus at the same time is gained a proton to become its conjugate acid, H2O. The proton in each of the sentences is the same proton. That's the important idea. So, HBr is lost to proton to become its conjugate base, conjugate base Br-. minus. But this has to happen twice because O2- minus has a 2- minus charge. So O2- minus has gained two protons to become its conjugate acid, H2O. We still have proton exchange happening but it just has to happen twice to balance the equation. 
So in the final example, phenol has lost a proton to become its conjugate base, the phenoxide ion C6H5O-, and at the same time, OH- gained that proton to become its conjugate acid, water. So now's a really good time to pause the clip and uh, find some examples, maybe in a textbook or a worksheet that you've been given or something like that, and, and practice this idea, because it will come up in exams and it's easy marks, you just have to know sort of instinctively what to look for. So I'm going to do a quick mention of the hydronium ion, or H3O+, which is formed when H plus reacts with water. So it's got a data covalent bond between oxygen and one hydrogen, and there's one lone pair left on oxygen. So here's a quick question for you. Can you predict the bond angle in H3O plus? So pause the clip and give this a go. So hopefully realising there's only one lone pair in the central atom and three bond pairs, and that electron pairs repel as much as possible, the bond angle for least repulsion is 107 degrees, which gives us a trigonal pyramidal shape. So here's another pause the clip exercise. This one tests out your ability to draw ionic equations, but also your knowledge and recall of first-year bases. Um, so all five first-year bases are listed there. And I'd like you to think about how they might react with H3O+. As you work it out, you'll see something about H3O+, that we'll discuss when we go through the answers. So here are the answers. Um, let's take a moment to look at each one in detail. <coughs> What does every single one have in common? So in each case, uh, the hydronium ion has behaved as an acid and converts to water and aqueous hydrogen ions. So it can be assumed that the concentration of H3O plus is always equal to the concentration of H plus. So H3O plus in aqueous solution can also be used as a measure of acidity. But what we do to measure acidity is use the pH scale, which is a little bit easier, but I just wanted to spend a bit of time taking you through the chemistry of what actually happens between H plus and water, so you have a bit of a, a deeper understanding of what the role H3O plus actually plays is. So it's a Danish chemist Soren Sorensen was credited with the discovery or the de devising of the, the pH scale in around 1909. The letters pH actually uh, are assumed to stand for power of hydrogen because it's a logarithmic scale. And because in reality a linear scale would be too difficult to manage, be too big because of the huge range of values for hydrogen ion concentration that all the different acids that we know of actually exhibit because we've obviously got some acids that are very strong and some acids that are very weak. So to give you an idea of the scaling, the hydrogen ion concentration of an acid of pH 2 is 10 times greater than the hydrogen ion concentration of an acid of pH 3. So what this means is as you go down the scale each pH increment indicates an acid giving a 10 times larger hydrogen ion concentration than the one before it. So if you go up the scale the same applies for OH- in aqueous solution as well. We can use hydrogen ion concentration, which is the main one, uh, pH equals minus log H+. Plus. Or we can use pOH to give us indication, similarly, for the concentration of hydroxide ions. So for any solution, the pH plus the pOH will always equal 14. So let's quickly go through how you can use your scientific calculator to work out pH. And I'll give you a few examples to practice before we draw the clip to a close. So if you were asked to calculate the pH of a 2.5 mole per decimeter to the minus 3 solution of HCl, by drawing out the equation for the dissociation of HCl into H plus and Cl minus, you can see that both the HCl and the H plus are equimolar. So that must mean 
that you'd have the same concentration of H+. Plus. So that means you can assume that H plus is 2.5 mole per decimeter to the minus 3. So what you do is you press minus, you then press log, and then you type in the H plus concentration. So you end up with this value. Now, obviously, you're used to the pH scale going from 0 to 14. So in the case of very strong acids or alkalis, pH values can go below 0 or above 14. This does very occasionally happen. I chose this one on purpose because 2.5 moles per decimeter to the minus 3 is a very, very strong solution of HCl. OK. Here's another one for you. Calculate the pH of a 0 0.5 mole per decimeter to the minus 3 solution of NaOH. So we don't have any information about the hydrogen ion concentration, but using the same principle as before, because um, sodium hydroxide is a strong alkali, it completely dissociates, so the concentration of NaOH is going to be the same as the concentration of OH- because they're equimolar in the equation. So you can work out the pH, sorry, the pOH first of all, and then subtract the pOH from 14. So you rearrange the equation next to the picture of uh, Soren Sorensen, and that gives you 13.699, which is what you'd expect from a strong alkali. So here's a third one for you to have a go at. Pause the clip and try it, and then see if we agree with each other uh, when you resume. So with this one, it's what we call a uh, dibasic acid. This is because it's got two hydrogen atoms in its molecule, so therefore those two hydrogen atoms could potentially be uh, dissociated. So on the assumption that they are, um, we take it to mean that the hydrogen ion concentration is twice the concentration of the acid itself. So a double 1.5 to make 3.0. So therefore the pH is minus log 3.0, which gives me minus 0 0.477, which, as you'd expect, is another very strong acid. But before we get carried away, there's been a little bit of a problem, and it's been in here on purpose because I wanted to draw your attention to it. We've been assuming complete dissociation of our acid or our base. So we've been using the concentration of the acid or the base solution to give H plus aqueous or OH minus aqueous concentrations. So if the acid didn't fully dissociate, if it was a weak acid, for example, we couldn't do this. We wouldn't be able to assume complete dissociation. So the maths would be all messed up. So what we do in that case is uh, use what's called a Ka expression, and which is followed then by a Ka calculation. But this clip is already 13 minutes long, and if I kept going on and talking about K, it wouldn't be a quick review anymore, would it? So, without being cheeky too much here, I'll have to refer you to one of my other clips on K calculations. Okay, for now, thanks for listening, and uh, until next time, see you soon.